There's no doubt that PC gaming opens up doors to endless hours of action, immersion and entertainment. But if you're new to the game or you simply want to upgrade your current battle station, just how much you need to spend. This video will look at answering that very question, so if you do want to get the most from your money and maximize gaming performance, this is the video for you. Now this video has been kindly sponsored by CyberPower PC and Nvidia. CyberPower PC is a fantastic place to go if you're wanting to buy a complete gaming system with everything assembled with care and cable managed immaculately. You can configure your own dream PC, or choose a system that's been specifically designed to play your favourite title. Check them out at the link below. There are many parts to a gaming PC, but I'd pretty much put them in three categories. Visual, Enabling, and Performance. A visual component is fairly self-explanatory, and is designed to make your system look even better. RGB, tempered glass, and custom cables are clear examples, and there's loads of options available. The thing to remember is that none of these will actually make a difference to your gameplay, no matter how bright that RGB shines. Enablers are perhaps the most interesting ones, and not just because I've given them a fancy name. Examples include motherboards, coolers and power supplies, with each part allowing your PC to function as intended. Cheaper components will often be perfectly acceptable, as for the most part they don't actually impact your performance, they merely enable you to use more expensive components or to get the most out of them. It's about buying the right enablers for your performance parts. So this brings us on nicely then to the performance parts, which, as you probably guessed, will directly impact the performance of your PC. The critical four are the graphics card, processor, RAM, and storage. It's these four components that will dictate how powerful your computer is and the tasks it can be used for. The faster the storage, the faster things will load, and the more RAM you have, the more programs you can open simultaneously. Now there's no doubt that a PC will see a benefit from having 16GB of RAM and an SSD, but when it comes to gaming, there's two components in particular that will directly impact your frame rate, and that's the processor and the graphics card. Fire up a game and both will be put to very good use, as games can actually be very taxing. The processor handles the core instructions of the game, while the graphics card will conduct the heavy lifting, calculating the exact colour and position of millions of pixels many times a second. In the vast majority of scenarios, it's these two things that will determine your frame rates. The more powerful they are, the higher your frame rate will be. But remember that cranking up the in-game settings can bring this tumbling back down. These components are expensive though, and they'll probably take up a very large chunk of your budget. So I guess the question is, which one should you prioritise? To put this to the test, I grabbed two graphics cards and two processors to see how they would impact gaming performance. On the graphics front, I picked the GeForce GTX 1050 Ti and the GeForce GTX 1070. As for the CPUs, I've got the slightly outdated i5-6500K and then the current i7-8700. All were running at stock factory settings, with each game set to the high preset. The first benchmark was Final Fantasy, and here we get a score that reflects performance. At full HD resolution, our base PC handles the game fairly modestly, but let's say you want more performance. Upgrading the CPU with two extra cores would no doubt help in many creative applications, but here the score is essentially identical. Swapping out to a more powerful graphics card instead though, yields a significantly higher score, bringing much smoother performance. Move over to some real world tests, and the story continues as before. Both PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds and Fortnite show that at each resolution, upgrading the CPU doesn't really change anything, whereas a better graphics card is a literal game changer. You see, as long as you have a strong processor with four or more cores, in the vast majority of cases, it's the graphics card that will be holding you back, and it's this that will dictate how your games play. Don't get me wrong, the processor is indeed an incredibly important component, but going further than an i5 or Ryzen 5 it's not necessarily the right choice if you're wanting gaming performance, and therefore further budget should probably go towards an upgraded graphics card. The takeaway here is that there's a very clear path when choosing components for a PC build. Start by looking at the games you want to play, the resolution and the settings, and then find a graphics card that will actually fit those demands. Then you can start to work backwards. Which performance parts do you need to pair with it, and will you need your PC for anything else? If you do need to make the computer a little bit cheaper, can you drop the RAM maybe to 8GB, or pick up an older generation processor as we have done here? Then it's time to start thinking about those enablers. 
Do you want to overclock your processor? Then you'd need a motherboard that supports that. Or do you want a really powerful graphics card? Then you'll probably need a power supply that can support that. Then finally, consider the visuals. Can you afford the extra 20 quid for some RGB strips? Or is that tempered glass case taking your eye? It's this area that you should heavily cut back on if you're trying to shave a few pounds. After all, most of it can actually be easily added at a later date. If you are thinking about buying a new gaming PC or a new graphics card, I'll leave links down in the Dan down in the comment section below. A massive thank you to Cyberpower PC for sponsoring this video as well as Nvidia. Let me know your thoughts though. What would be your tips and tricks to anyone that is planning out a new gaming PC build? Is there anything I've missed? Always interested to hear your thoughts. If you have enjoyed this video though, please hit the like button as it lets others know it's a video worth watching. And of course, get subscribed for more videos just like this. And if you do want to check out some more PC Gaming Explained videos that hopefully make this topic seem fairly straightforward, you can find them in the end screen. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.